On our construction timeline, we've talked about the repetitive documents that occur in the middle, and there are many singular documents in the startup phase. What I'd like to focus on now is the closeout phase, where lots of one-time documents are also executed. So let's recreate our timeline at a larger scale, this arrow representing that this is the back end of the job. And in the closeout phase, the document and event that occurs around which most of the other things revolve is the issuance of a certificate of substantial completion. Basically, none of the rest of the closeout components will occur until this certificate has been issued. And for vertical construction, this certificate is issued by the architect, although in most cases it also requires the owner to acknowledge that completion. Contractually, the certificate of substantial completion is related to the contract clock, and the issuance of the certificate stops the clock. So you can imagine that the contractor is very interested in establishing that date on which the project is substantially complete. This could have an impact on liquidated damages, but primarily determines whether the project is completed on time, early, or late. So a very important contractual document that, again, is issued by the architect, but typically requires all three parties to concur. Now I'm going to skip ahead to basically the last thing that happens on most any project, and that is the receipt of the last dollar by the contractor. And typically, this last dollar represents the retainage that was being withheld based on the contract terms. Now we'll populate this space in between the certificate of substantial completion and the release of the retainage dollars. There are a lot of very important closeout documents that have to be issued in that time frame to close out the job appropriately. Another certificate that is issued in the closeout phase is the certificate of occupancy. In many ways, the certificate of occupancy is very different than substantial completion. The primary way is the certificate of occupancy is issued by the authority with jurisdiction, and this would typically be a city or a county. In some cases, it could be the fire marshal or someone else, but usually is issued by a public official. And the primary difference is that substantial completion is based on contractual scope, and the certificate of occupancy is based on life safety issues for the public. Said another way, the contract has a prescribed scope of work. There was a certain type of brick required, there was a certain color of paint required, and so forth. And all of those things would have to be completed correctly as part of the contract. But the certificate of occupancy doesn't have anything to do with whether or not the contract scope was met, but rather whether or not the building is safe for the public to occupy. So that's very important for a number of reasons, one of which is from the lending point of view. Because once the certificate of occupancy has been issued, then it's no longer a construction project, but now is an occupiable building, which makes a big difference to the owner and the lender. There are several other things that might happen associated with the issuance of a certificate of occupancy or the certificate of substantial completion. For example, if there were a construction loan involved in the project, the owner could then convert to permanent financing. And as you might imagine, that's particularly important. We could also convert insurance from builder's risk to standard property and casualty insurance. Oftentimes at this stage of the game, utilities are also converted from being in the name of the general contractor to being in the name of the owner. So as you can see, as a function of these two documents, there are a lot of things that happen that are of great deal of interest to both the contractor and the owner as it relates to shifts of risk, changes in financial terms, and the ability to use the building for its intended use. Once the certificate of substantial completion is issued, then typically the contractor would be able to bill for the last progress payment. This would be a payment defined as 100% of the project, but still minus the retainage. What this suggests is that everything on the project has been substantially completed, but there remain a few things to do. One of the things that happens as a function of the certificate of substantial completion being issued is the architect would also produce a punch list. And then from the time the contractor bills for 100% of progress minus retainage, then his task is basically to complete the punch list and provide closeout, all of which would be necessary to receive the final retainage payment. There are a series of items that would be necessary to provide in that part of the closeout process. The contractor would submit all of the closeout documents, including warranties, 
operation and maintenance manuals, extra materials, as-built drawings, etc. And there would also be a series of documents that would need to be provided. First, the contractor would provide an affidavit of release of lien. And basically what that document does is waives the right to file a lien on the project upon receipt of retainage. A related document the contractor would also provide is an affidavit of payment of debts and claims. And what that document does is affirms that he has paid to date everyone that he is supposed to have paid. Related to the bonding process, the contractor would also submit a document executed by the surety, and that is a consent of surety to final payment. The surety is very interested in knowing when the contractor is about to receive their final dollar, and before the owner will release that dollar, the surety would have to give consent that they acknowledge that the contractor is about to be paid. Then once collectively all of those things are done, on some projects we would look for the architect to issue a certificate of final completion. That certificate confirms that all things are done both physically and contractually and that everything has been received in good order, all closeout documents received, punch list has been addressed accordingly. And then once that certificate has been issued, then the contractor can issue his final and last pay application for the amount of the retainage, after which the owner would then make the last payment.